Tonight we are asking tough questions after a man was buried alive when a trench collapsed in on him. 20-year-old Danny Rusu is in intensive care tonight in serious condition. And while he recovers, we want to know what went wrong. Chris Woodard asking the tough questions directly to the company owner. He joins us live. Chris? Yeah, and if you take a look here on site, the crews are just finishing their cleanup for the day. That's because they were back out here today working, though now they are doing it under the watchful eye of OSHA. OSHA is investigating, and today we also went to the company owner to ask some questions about safety procedures. I'm glad he's alive. It was a frightening situation with a positive outcome. A trench collapses, resulting in a nerve-wracking, nearly four-hour-long trench rescue operation. He had a sense of humor and didn't have any broken bones, which is a miracle in itself. But he's doing great. Today, I went to the owner to find out how this could happen. Did your crew that was out here yesterday follow proper safety procedure? Yes, I'm confident they did. Um, in seeing the pictures and what I've seen this morning, we used the correct shoring, OSHA required shoring for the type of soil composition that we had, and uh, <clears throat> the hole were shored from top to bottom. Some, including one rescuer on scene, are saying this collapse could have been prevented if shoring the brace inside the trench went further down. The company did have stabilizers in place, but they weren't in place quite as far down as they should have been for as deep as they were in the trench. Generally, there'll be a foot and a half or two feet on the bottom of the shoring that we need to be able to work to make the connection, and that's where the dirt sloughed in through the bottom. So is, is that foot and a half to two feet, is that standard, or should the shoring have been lower? No, it, uh, well, it's... OSHA requirement is a foot and a half to two feet from the bottom of the fin, the shoring board, to the bottom of the trench. I checked the OSHA technical manual, and while it appears to depend on the type of brace used, it does give some permissions to dig up to two feet below the bottom of a trench box wall. OSHA will have the final say as they are now on scene investigating. We look at things like um, supervision and training. We're going to look at the scene and the equipment on the scene, trying to figure out what may have led up to this. And also we do interviews with witnesses and employees. Oh, in two inspections of the company, Apollo Drain and Rooter Service, last year, OSHA did find one violation they labeled as serious. Well, today, they did explain that a little bit more, saying it was actually a rather routine violation, something they see a lot of for a grinder at the shop that didn't have a guard on it. Now, I'm told the current OSHA investigation may last up to six months, but again, the owner of Apollo told me today he welcomes that investigation and says the company has nothing to hide. Live in Southwest Portland, I'm Chris Woodard for Coin 6 News. Chris.